The Afro-Germans, otherwise known as the Black Germans, are citizens or residents of Germany that are from Sub-Saharan Africa. There were lots of black people in Germany in the 18th century, but their number decreased after a while, causing few or no Afro-German in some parts of Germany. Cities such as Hamburg and Frankfurt, which were formerly centers of occupation forces following World War II and more recent immigration, have substantial Afro-German communities. With modern trade and migration, communities such as Frankfurt, Berlin, Munich, and Cologne have an increasing number of Afro-Germans. Kevin Prince Boiding and his twin brother Jerome are descendants from the Afro-Germans. In this video, we are going to be talking about the erasure of African descent in Germany and what led to their reduction. Stay tuned and learn more. Let's begin. History of Afro-Germans Frederick William, a grand elector of Brandenburg, Prussia, founded the Brandenburg African Compartney in 1682. He also ordered the establishment of a fort on the coast of present-day Ghana to rival Europe's great sea powers. The fort was named Grab Friedrichsburg. It was designed to serve as a point of departure for the German slave trade. Years later, German slave ships, such as the Frederich III, transported thousands of African slaves. Some of the slaves ended up on the slave market of St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. St. Thomas is known to be the most prominent slave market in the world. Africans were brought as slaves from the western coast of Africa, where a number of German estates were established, primarily on the Gold Coast. Twelve Negro boys were brought from the western part of Africa. Six were decorated with golden chains and presented to the king. These enslaved children were later bought by their new masters, and they were taken to Potsdam and Berlin. King Friedrich Wilhelm, the first of Prussia, later sold his Ghana Grad Friedrichsburg estates, situated in Africa, in 1717. During this period, slaves were traded for German linen fabrics and interracial couples were pressured. Before World War I, thousands of black people lived in Germany, some of which came from Africa, North and South America, and the Caribbean. The First World War limited international travel and migration in 1914. The Germans imposed strict migration rules. Some that had traveled to the country for business only stayed for a while, then left before the war commenced. After World War I ended, the immigrants who were still in the country could not leave because they had no passports or travel documents. Hence, they were stranded in the country. The Erasure of the Afro-Germans the erasure of people of African descent from Germany is a gradual process that eventually occurred after several harsh conditions and laws. The Afro-German's population largely declined during the Nazi regime. The Nazis, short for National Socialists, were a political party that rose to power in Germany in the 1930s, led by Adolf Hitler. The Nazi party was known for its extreme nationalism, racism, and totalitarianism, and sought to establish a fascist state based on these ideals. In the 19th century, several thousand blacks were living in Germany, but when the Nazis came into power, the blacks were harassed and persecuted. The Nazi regime promoted the idea of Aryan supremacy and aimed to purify the German population through eugenics and racial policies. Non-Aryans, including Jews, Roma, Sinti, homosexuals, disabled individuals, and people of African descent, were considered inferior and targeted for exclusion and persecution. During this period, the Nazis' policies became more extreme. They created laws that made most black people end up in prisons, hospitals, psychiatric facilities, and concentration camps. Many Afro-Germans were also forcibly conscripted into the German military during the war, and those who fought on the front lines faced additional discrimination and mistreatment. Some Afro-German soldiers were sent to the Eastern Front, where they were treated particularly harshly by their fellow soldiers and subjected to brutal conditions. A lot of Afro-Germans died during this period. This was one of the reasons which led to their decline in population. The Nuremberg Race Laws the Nazi regime declared the Nuremberg Race Laws in September 1935. These laws were put in place because of the Jews, but in November 1935, the law also affected the Black and the Roman people. During this period, those of non-Aryan descent were called
The first Nuremberg Law was also known as the Reich Citizenship Law. It stated that a German citizen was of German origin or related by blood. This law was to exclude non-Aryans from political rights in Germany. The second law was for the protection of German blood and German honor. With this law, race mixing, otherwise known as race defilement, was banned. The law forbade intermarriage or sexual relations between the German or its related blood. This law aimed to prevent black people from marrying and having children with Germans. The Nuremberg race laws made it difficult for the blacks in Germany to marry or to build a future. Despite the laws against interracial couples, some blacks who were romantically engaged to the German Aryans got married though the relationship was dangerous for both partners. The law pressured white German women to divorce their black husbands. They felt the presence of the Afro-Germans was a threat to their racial purity. Afro-Germans were popularly known as Rhineland bastards, a derogatory term used to describe people of mixed race ancestry. The detests for the African descent also made Bernhard Dernberg, the German director for colonial affairs, make a derogatory statement. He announced that some native tribes, just like some animals, must be destroyed. During this period, not only were the Africans hated, the Jews and some people who were not related to German blood were criticized. Black children were excluded from schools. They suffered a lot of criticism from their parents. They felt lonely, isolated, and excluded from society. The children wanted to be part of the German excitement, but that wasn't allowed. At first, the discrimination against school children was a local initiative, but things got worse when the Nazis took control of schooling and enforced formal bans against black students. The Nazi law completely banned Jewish children from attending German public schools. Let's stop here for a minute. Encourage us to continue making videos like this by liking this video and subscribing to the new tourist channel. Do not forget to turn on notifications so you get notified whenever we upload interesting videos like this. Let's continue. Forced Sterilization This was a wicked strategy used by the Nazis to persecute black people in Germany. They forcefully sterilized the multiracial children in Rhineland. The Nazis wanted to prevent race mixing, so they forcibly sterilized the black men while seeing them as a threat to the strength and purity of the Aryan race. This sterilization was to make them unable to have children. They announced the law for the prevention of offspring with hereditary diseases in a bid to prevent race mixing in 1933. During this period, about 400,000 people were sterilized. For instance, Ferdinand Allen, who was from a black British father and a white German mother, suffered from epilepsy and was forcibly sterilized by court order on May 15, 1941. Allen was later murdered at Bernberg by the Nazis, following their T4 program. We are going to be telling you more about this T4 program shortly. A secret Gestapo coordinated the forced sterilization of multiracial children in 1930 and a total of 385 children and teenagers were forcibly sterilized. Establishment of the T4 Program The T4 Program, also known as the Euthanasia Program, was a Nazi policy involving the involuntary euthanasia of people with physical and mental disabilities. The program also targeted other groups deemed unworthy of life, including Afro-Germans. The T4 program had a significant impact on the decline of Afro-Germans because it allowed the forced sterilization and murder of those who were considered racially inferior. One of the victims of the T4 program is hilarious Larry Gilges, who was a black German dancer and communist activist. He was murdered by the Nazis and his body was left on the street on June 20, 1933. Gilge's murder took place during the first months of the Nazi regime. The Law for the Restoration of the Professional Civil Service The Law for the Restoration of the Professional Civil Service was enacted in April 1933. The law provided for the removal of Jews and others deemed politically unreliable from government positions, including teaching positions in schools and universities, administrative positions, and other roles within the civil service. The law defined Jews as anyone who had at least one Jewish grandparent and also included political dissidents, homosexuals, and others deemed undesirable by the Nazi regime. African descent was greatly affected by this law because only citizens could allegedly become civil servants. 
Naturalized Afro-Germans lost their passports, and the working conditions became difficult, especially for those in prominent industries, such as music or movies. Many Germans embraced this ideology and openly discriminated against black people on their initiative. Colleagues and bosses were reluctant to work with people whose skin color marked them as outsiders in the Nazi racial community. All these rules that were brought up by the Germans helped in the reduction and erasure of African descent from Germany. It is important to know that in the latter years, Afro-Germans have fought for their rights. They used a variety of methods to fight for their rights. They have participated in protests and demonstrations to demand their rights and challenge racial discrimination. For example, the black community in Germany organized protests against discriminatory laws and practices, such as the ban on interracial marriage in the 1920s and 1930s. In addition to protests, they have engaged in civil disobedience, such as refusing to comply with discriminatory laws or regulations. An example is the Utter Michael, a black German who refused to comply with the Nazi policy of racial segregation in public transportation during World War II. Afro-Germans have also used legal action to challenge discriminatory practices and laws. In the 1950s and 1960s, some Afro-Germans successfully challenged the German government's refusal to grant them citizenship rights. In his book, Being German and Also Black, Theodor Michael Wanja, whose father was originally from Douala in Cameroon, and his mother German, recounts how his father and other Africans were kept in human zoos for ethnological expositions. That was the best most blacks could do at the time to make a living in Germany. Germans put them there and other white people came to watch them without any shame. Up until the 1930s, there were about 400 human zoos in Germany alone. Most of these Africans were homesick, some died because they couldn't get vaccinated or any treatment. Their cultural expressions, such as music, literature, and art, have gone a long way to challenge stereotypes and assert their identity. For example, the Afro-German jazz musician Louise Armstrong was an important cultural figure in Germany during the 1930s and 1940s. Sadly, some Afro-Germans who fought for their rights were killed for their activism. Amadou Antonio Kioa, who was an activist, was murdered by neo-Nazis in 1992. His death sparked widespread outrage and led to the creation of the Amadou Antonio Foundation, which works to combat racism and xenophobia in Germany. Memorial plaques called Stolperstein, meaning stumbling stones, have been dedicated to black victims of Nazi persecution and murder. Now that you know about the erasure of the Afro-Germans, it will be interesting to know there were also Afro-Argentines. We have added a video on our channel which talks about how Argentina got rid of its black population. Make sure you watch it too. Like and subscribe to the new tourist channel, and do not forget to turn on notifications so you get notified whenever we upload interesting content like this. Thank you and see you in our next video.